Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Stone, chair of the PAS World Percussion Committee. I hope everyone's enjoying this year's virtual PASIC. And while, like all of you, I'm disappointed that we can't be gathered together in person, I'm happy that this year's PASIC is, in fact, the most international convention we have ever had. And it gives me great delight to introduce to all of you our friends from Education Africa in South Africa. So let me introduce Joan Lithgow, Kabonina Motaong, and Pusoletso Rameshwai, who will be sharing with you today the incredible work they've been doing together with Education Africa. Education Africa is a South African nonprofit established in 1992 with the mission of making real change happen by providing poverty alleviation through education. Their work is designed to educate a new generation of leaders in South Africa with projects impacting around 600 schools and tens of thousands of students. Hi, it's such a pleasure to be here. My name is Puseleto Ramashwai. I work for Education Africa as a marimba assistant. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be part of this presentation. My name is Kabuni Namutawu and I work at Education Africa as a marimba assistant. Good afternoon everyone. Thank you for inviting us to be part of this conference. We are delighted to be sharing our experiences from South Africa. I'm Joan Lithgow and I head the Music and Marimba Projects at Education Africa. I've enjoyed getting to know the work of Education Africa through your many exciting marimba projects, including your Marimba Hubs program, International Marimba Tours, the annual Social Cohesion Concert Sounds of Celebration, and the annual International Marimba and Steel Pan Festival. Gabonina. Could you tell us a bit about Education Africa's Marimba Hubs program? We have 16 Marimba Hubs, mostly in Gauteng, and prior to COVID, we had nearly 1,000 participants in our program. We pride ourselves in that we are fully inclusive, and we have three special needs bands, and one of the, one of the bands being a deaf school. Here you're going to see two short clips, one of Dominican School for the Deaf, as well as MCK Special School, Special Needs School, which is a school for both deaf children as well as mildly intellectually disabled children. <laughs> instruments and equipment to engage children who would never be able normally to afford to play a music instrument. We then train teachers in that community who have never played nor been taught the marimba in a 40-hour intensive training course. We use a methodology which John will explain later that enables this learning to take place in both a fun as well as a productive manner. And so once the marimba teachers have been trained, Busseletto and myself go out and support these teachers both to become successful as well as better in their skill. <laughs> workshops three times a year to ensure that our teachers are always stretched and now since the outbreak of COVID-19 present short 10-minute daily sessions via WhatsApp 
that we send to our teachers. The best part for Pata Pata. This is the rhythmic vocabulary. Joan, I've been really impressed by the methodology you've developed to teach marimbas to very large groups of students. Could you tell all of us about the pedagogy you've developed through Education Africa? Each of our hubs is equipped with three combination marimbas and a bass marimba, 22 dummy keyboards and a djembe drum. The marimbas we use in our program are diatonic marimbas with interchangeable F sharps and B flats. The marimbas accommodate 11 players at one time, and the addition of 22 dummy keyboards allows 33 children to learn at the same time using a rotation method, whereby each child is rotated every three to five minutes. All the music is learned by rote and is taught in bite-sized chunks. <laughs> developed a system of reading music through what I call memory joggers. These are graphic representations of staff notation. An integral part of my method is to teach the marimba players to move and dance while playing the marimba. In a nutshell, the method not only embraces music making on the marimba, but encourages social and educational changes amongst the learners, including team building, leadership, development of empathy, listening skills, equal usage of left and right brain hemispheres, social skills like politeness, discipline, concentration, professionalism, and oh, so much more. Take a look at the video of one of our bands who toured the USA in 2010 and played with Gloria Gaynor singing her famous I Will Survive. These are youngsters aged 11 and 12. Look at the discipline, concentration and attentiveness, not to mention their performance skills. Pusiletso, I understand that prior to working with Education Africa, you were a teacher at one of the marimba hubs, and that as one of Joan's students, you took part in the 2018 marimba tour to the United Kingdom. Could you tell us more about your tours and Education Africa's work internationally? Education Africa, funding permitted, takes bands that are formed out of our marimba hubs on an overseas tour. In 2018, whilst I was still working for Boys and Girls Clubs of Protea Clan, South Africa, we were asked to prepare a band to go to the UK. We had to learn an hour-long program which took us six months to prepare as we teach everything by road. It was an amazing experience for our children who had never been in an aeroplane before and never in their wildest dream dreamed and imagined of traveling overseas. The preparation for the tour was very intense, but when we got to the UK, everything was worth it. We stayed at Landbrook School for a week, 
We attended classes with their peers, taught them how to play marimbas, played hiding medley with their school orchestra, and finally gave several performances in and around London. We were able to, side, to do lots of sightseeing, learn and appreciate other cultures other than ours. Here is a short insert of the band performing. Nina, I understand that you also studied with Joan from the age of six and went on to complete a degree in drama therapy. Since joining the Education Africa team, you have been instrumental in organizing the Sounds of Celebration. Could you tell us about this project? Every year, Education Africa has a concept entitled Sounds of Celebration, which brings together 200 performers from our hub bands as well as children from privileged backgrounds and professionals who all come together to perform in a social cohesion concept. This is a collaboration with the Jewish community from the Sydney Shore. So the idea behind the concept is, is really to enable social cohesion to take place on common ground, the concert stage. And in playing music together, it levels the playing field starting conversation and building friendships that wouldn't ordinarily happen under normal circumstances. I've been blessed to have taken part in your International Marimba and Steel Pan Festival on three different occasions. I was really moved by the Ubuntu spirit at the festival and your event was one of the most powerful percussion programs I've ever taken part in. Joan, could you tell us about this signature event? The Education Africa International Marimba and Steel Pan Festival is regarded as the largest festival of its kind in the world and attracts 2,000 marimba players from all over South Africa as well as the rest of Africa. Education Africa launched the International Marimba and Steel Pan Festival in 2012 to create an awareness worldwide of the educational value of marimba playing and to create an international platform for our marimba and steel pan players in South Africa as well as players from the rest of the world. Ever since the first live international marimba and steel pan festival in 2012, it has been my dream to have a fully inclusive marimba and steel pan festival that attracts participants from all over the world. A festival that caters for marimba ensembles of all shapes and sizes, not just African marimbas. I've also wanted to include solar marimba and steel pan performances, but logistically this has not been possible. Then COVID hit the world and the most amazing possibilities and dreams have become a reality. We have seven countries participating in this year's virtual festival. South Africa, United Kingdom, the Caribbean, Japan, United States of America, Australia, and Zimbabwe. We have solo marimba participants, and we have 149 performances by 70 unique bands. While this is just over half of the entries we normally get for our live festivals, given the COVID restrictions worldwide, I'm delighted with not only the participation, but also the standard of performance. Our live festival usually runs over the last weekend in July of each year. Over two days, we have nearly 300 competitive performances in 21 different categories arranged in ages, ensemble sizes, and gen genres. In addition, we have 90 workshops in various venues where you can learn how to play djembes, 
marimbas, steel pans, beerers, and so much more. We also have a massed item where in 40 minutes I teach the marimba and steel pan players a new piece of music especially written by me for the festival. <laughs> At least 500 performers play together in this massed item. The festival is fully inclusive. What I like the most is uh, we were competing with other schools and other schools were happy for us. There was no judging. I feel good. Why? Because I think the judges saw that Dominican did well. <laughs> a huge opportunity for them to play here because when we look at their backgrounds most of them where they come from their families hide them the fact that they can participate in such a festival it makes them feel like you know what I really do belong it was my first time to see teachers play marimba with us we just wanted to have fun with playing marimba and with each other we were all nervous but we played we all did our part, yeah. So I think we all, I think my performance was okay. They played very well. They enjoyed. It was hard for them because they are old, but yeah, they did their best. You know, one of the most striking aspects of the festival is the incredible spirit that is displayed. Despite the fierce competitive element, you find everyone cheering on everyone else as if it was their own band. The spirit of Ubuntu, a South African word that means I am because you are, is never more evident than at this festival. Please enjoy one of our performances of one of our hub bands from a recent live festival. And to end this presentation, here is a high school band from Zimbabwe participating in our virtual festival.
I'd like to invite you all to watch our virtual festival, which will be taking place on our virtual international marimba and steel pan festival South Africa Facebook page between the 1st and the 13th of December 2020. It will also be on the Education Africa YouTube channel between these dates. Please don't hesitate to contact me via email if you'd like to know more about our projects. My email address is Joan at educationafrica.org. Thank you for spending time with us. Goodbye. Joan, Cabonina, and Pusilezzo, thank you so much for sharing with us today your work with Education Africa. It has been a pleasure to learn more about what you're doing in South Africa, and I look forward to our continued collaborations and I hope that our wide percussion community can also take part in your many events and find ways to support your incredible work in South Africa. <laughs>